Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb, and we are going to be talking about the use of NSAIDs, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, with uh, patients that are receiving PRP therapy. And we have uh, uncovered a very interesting study that indicates there's a very significant relationship between NSAIDs and mm -hmm. PRP. Um, and basically in this study, they're, they're seeing uh, how uh, the NSAIDs would affect the viability of a patient's platelets for reinjection uh, in, in PRP therapy. Don, can you tell us a bit about this study and what they found? Sure, so um, the authors looked at 21 patients and all these patients had recently um, suffered some sort of sports injury uh, and they were gonna undergo um, orthopedic surgery, mm -hmm. actually. So they divided them up into two groups. Group one was 11 patients and all these patients were treated actually with um, NSAIDs uh, following injury for um, an average of 3.2 days. And then 10 patients who had not taken any NSAIDs for at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so, they, so basically the researchers wanted to see, do NSAIDs affect um, platelet viability? Mm -hmm. So they took initial platelet counts and determined everyone was well within range. Um, then they prepared PRP using two different collection methods, right. which I thought was good because then that kind of eliminated um, that it could be, you know, a procedural error right. that or, caused... Or maybe one of these PRP kits is causing issues exactly. and another one isn't. But yeah, they use mm -hmm. both and... Yeah, so they, they used one that was just a single spin and then a second one that was a little bit more thorough, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the end result was uh, there was no statistically significant difference in platelet counts between the two groups, NSAIDs and non-NSAIDs. Right. Um, however, upon evaluation using um, platelet, a platelet function test, uh, they, looked at, they looked at four different types of functions. Mm -hmm. um, collagen, ADP, one called TRAP6, which is just another uh, way of assessing another method for platelet uh, degranulation to occur. Okay. But one that was really interesting is called um, arachidonic acid. And basically this is something that, that uh, researchers use in order to determine um, if drugs are inhibiting platelet release. So this acid is actually a fatty acid um, and it's released from platelets upon activation. Okay. Um, and it's converted into an enzyme called cyclo, uh, cyclooxygenase. Uh, so this is a potent inducer of platelet aggregation. Okay. And platelet aggregation is what indicates normal uh, platelet functioning. Right. So without platelet aggregation, you're not gonna get uh, degranulation, secretion of growth factors. Right, right. Platelets don't do good on their own. They need no. to be able to aggregate and activate mm -hmm. and, and release their growth factors at the site of injury. Exactly. So they need they need some sort of some sort of signal from the outside saying, Hey, you know, you, you need to go into battle and mm. usually it's like them being next to their buddies, basically. Right. right. Yeah, and, and so you're saying they mm -hmm. they noticed a statistically significant difference um, were they measuring the, the presence of this acid or what, what exactly were they measuring between or to determine that it, they weren't um, aggregating? Um, so I'm, I'm not actually that familiar with this test method, mm -hmm. but it's some sort of, um, I think it's a, some sort of flow cytom cytometry or something. Yeah. I'm not totally 100% sure about this test. I've sure, never had sure. any indication but um, but in the study they they say essentially this is a problem because these platelets are not going to aggregate yes and this is just a standard platelet viability test that they'll carry out um, to assess if, if you're having like a bleeding disorder or something mm -hmm. then they'll assess how your platelets are doing using this test right and they'll they'll test it for multiple different factors that could induce platelet uh, degranulation right basically and this, this one particular compound, this um, arachidonic acid, mm -hmm. is what indicates that, hey, th there's um, a drug that's inhibiting your platelets. Got it, okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, if, if the platelets, uh, 
have low functioning, they're not going to produce all the cytokines and growth factors right. and all the good things that we really want out of PRP. Right. So it's not going to be that effective of a treatment method. If Got you're it. on NSAIDs, uh, right, right when you're having the PRP prepared. Yeah. And, and these can stay in your system for a while, which is why they did a two week. The group exactly. that was the, the non NSAID group, they, they made sure they weren't on any for two weeks prior because mm -hmm. some of them can stay in your system for over a week. Yeah, some of them are significantly stronger, um, and they'll, they'll, they can stay in there for, yeah, like eight, nine days. Mm -hmm. um, and some flush out of your system in six, seven hours. And also, people vary in terms of sensitivity to them. Yeah. So they might stay a little longer or a little later. Right. So, I mean, that's just something that, you know, just be aware of the medication that you're right. on. Talk to a doctor. Have well, yeah. you, the doctor should be talking to you. That's the so. thing, yeah. I think this is mostly for the doctors. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if you're delivering PRP therapy and you want to make sure your patients mm -hmm. are ideally not taking Advil or aspirin or Motrin or any of these NSAIDs, ideally for at least two weeks mm -hmm. um, before the PRP treatment. Um, so it does seem like this is a very important thing that could have some very significant outcomes on the PRP therapy. And plus this really shows something too. You might have a, a initially like a high platelet count that you think is great. It's mm -hmm. going to develop this wonderful therapeutic effect. Right. But there could be some underlying biochemistry that's inhibiting right. it. Right. It's so. not just about platelet counts. Mm -hmm. It's also about the viability of the platelets. And now we know it's also about their ability to actually aggregate. Yes, exactly. Great. Well, thank you, Don, for enlightening us. And um, yeah, we're going to have some more PRP videos coming up in just a minute.